Hi, I'm Amy. Remember me? I used to be part of this channel. Just been finding it harder to fit the amount of effort it takes into making a weekly video into my schedule. And I'm probably still taking some time off, but I couldn't pass up this week's topic, which I have been looking forward to since we uh, voted on the topics that we wanted to do next. So here I am, just as usual. There's still baskets of laundry behind me, except they're different baskets of laundry than they were last time you might have seen baskets of laundry behind me. Originally when we were coming up with topics, things I do when I'm sick and things I do when I'm sad were two separate topics. The others all decided that their answers were pretty much the same for both. My answers are not the same for both. My answer for what I do when I'm sick has changed in the past six years. Pre-kids, what I would do when I was sick was crash on the couch and uh, watch DVD special features. This is how I have watched all 57 some hours of Lord of the Rings special features. And now that I'm no longer pre-kids, I'm not sure how I'm going to manage to watch all the Hobbit special features. Although they just announced what's actually going to be on the special features, and um, Martin Freeman isn't doing commentary, which is just a shame. Now when I get sick, I just keep plugging on, doing what I normally do, and laying down and trying to convince people not to jump on me. Being sick is not nearly as fun when you're a mom. But, no, what I really wanted to talk about was what I do when I'm sad. Because that brings us back to my own favorite topic, music. This here is an empty cassette case. The tape that was in here fell victim to over-enthusiastic toddlers. As has nearly my entire um, cassette tape collection. But this particular mixtape is called Songs to Ease Depression. It is a, a depression mixtape. I created this mixtape when I was in high school. I gathered a whole bunch of songs that felt good when you were feeling down, and then I put them on the tape in order of most depressed to least depressed. The idea was you would listen to this tape and it would bring you gradually out of your bad mood. So it starts out with uh, Simon and Garfunkel's The Sound of Silence. I later made a, a, a different edition of this tape for a friend of mine and by that time I discovered Pink Floyd and it started with Hey You instead of The Sound of Silence. Then it went into Sound of Silence. Each song gradually became less depressive and more optimistic without being overly happy. When you get to the second side, which is written on the inside, you start getting into songs are getting more encouraging. Towards the end you run into Carol King's Beautiful. And the last song is of course my favorite song, Here Comes the Sun. And recently, within the past year, I thought the time had come to go back and remake this mix, except on a uh, computer library playlist instead of a mixed cassette mixtape. Making it now more with more songs that I've discovered that really affect my mood. But, you know, the one song I decided I have to put somewhere on this, on, on a new mix, was um, going back to Pink Floyd, their song Fearless, um, which I didn't even know at the time I made the second edition of the mixtape. So I started trying to make the playlist, and I gathered a whole bunch of songs. I put them into a playlist, and then I started to put them in that perfect bringing you out of it order. But as I was doing it, I realized that this progression of songs was not doing it for me anymore. When I had a perfect set of CDs already made by someone else. In the past couple years, whenever I've been feeling bad, I just put on this CD. This 
if you can't see it, is George Harrison's All Things Must Pass. This is my favorite post-Beatles Beatles album. The thing I've always liked about George Harrison's songwriting, and particularly the thing that I love most about him as the son, is that the emotions are never just one thing or another. Sad things have a little bit of hope, and happy things are tinged with a memory of sadness. Like, here comes the sun. The reason that song is so effective, as I've probably said in these words before, you know it's alright, because it's been a long, cold, lonely winter. Because it acknowledges the long, cold, lonely winter. You can feel that it is joy coming out of sadness instead of just forced happiness, instead of just random cheerfulness. This is the happiness felt by someone who's been down. <laughs> Likewise, in this CD, which is actually two CDs, which is actually a reissue of what had once been a three LP set, there's bonus tracks. Um, how did I start off that sentence? This album is just mellow. Even when it's not mellow. Because it will go from something very quiet and acoustic to the whole, um, Phil Spector wall of sound. Stuff happening. It feels folky even when it's not folky. A lot of the songs are exploring his, his spirituality. The incorporating Hinduism into his everyday life and into his previous um, Christian upbringing. Genuine songs of worship um, on here, as well as love songs, as well as complaining songs, as well as songs worrying about the state of the world, and songs that are just pensive little stories that you don't really understand but they feel nice. Is that you can put it on in any mood you're in. It, you don't have to start out in a bad mood. But you can start out in a terrible mood. And you put it on and you're in the mood for it no matter what kind of mood you're in. It's either too depressing nor too happy. It's an immediately perfect mi mixture of both. I mean, that's... That's what I do when I, I'm sad. When I'm mad, I usually put on more hard rock. I use music to self-medicate. So, I will see you sometime in the unknown future, whenever I feel like doing a video again. Um, and you will see everyone else next week. Is Easy doing a vlog tomorrow? I hope she is. I like her vlogs. Okay, that's all. Good night.